Welcome. Let's discuss trig cofunction identities. We want to identify if there's any relationship between the sine and the cosine function. Let's choose a reference angle for the triangle on the left. Let's choose angle A. And let's consider the function, the cosine of angle A. Let's label our triangle properly. The side that is opposite to 90 degrees, that's a hypotenuse. The side that is opposite to our reference angle, that's the opposite side. And the side next to the angle, that's the adjacent. Remembering that cosine is being defined as adjacent or hypotenuse, then we can define the cosine of angle A as the adjacent being AC over the hypotenuse AB. On the triangle on the right, let's choose a different reference angle. Let's choose angle B. And now let's define the sine of angle B. Let's label our triangle properly. The side of opposite of 90 degrees, that's the hypotenuse. The side opposite to our reference angle, that's the opposite side. And the side that is next to our angle, that's the adjacent side. Remembering that sine is being defined as opposite over hypotenuse, then we can define the sine of angle B as AC being our opposite divided by AB as a hypotenuse. Let's look at our results. The cosine of angle A is defined as AC over AB, and the sine of angle B is also defined as AC over AB. So if they both give you the same ratio, then we can say that those two functions are equal to each other. Now let's think about, is there any relationship between angle A and angle B? And to show this relationship, let's draw a new right triangle. We know that if we add angle A, angle C, and angle B, it should be equal to 180 degrees. Because this is a right triangle, angle C has a total of 90 degrees. So if we combine those two ideas together, then we can say that if we add angle A and if we add angle B, it should be equal to 90 degrees. But if we move B to the other side, then we can say that angle A is equal to 90 minus angle B. Now let's expand on this idea a little bit further. If we combine these two conclusions, we can make the following statement. If we get our expression of angle A and we plug it in to where we use angle A, we can say that the cosine, instead of calling it angle A, we're gonna call it 90 minus angle B. That is equal to the sine of angle B. And here we have our first cofunction identity. And we could have gone the other way around as well. In our identity, if instead of solving for angle A, we would have solved for angle B, we would have the expression that angle B is equal to 90 minus angle A. And if we plug our new expression for B now under the angle of sine, we will obtain the expression, the cosine of angle A is equal to the sine, but instead of calling it angle B, we're going to use the expression 90 minus angle A. And here we have our second identity. Let's generalize this result. If we have any angle, let's call it beta, then we have two identities. The cosine of that angle is the same as the sine of 90 minus that angle and the other way around. The sine of that angle that is equal to the cosine of 90 minus that angle. And we call this cofunction identities. Let's give some quick examples about this. So let's say that we are given the angle of 30 degrees. Then the sine of 30 degrees, it is equal 
to the cosine of 90 minus 30 degrees. If we simplify this any further, we can say that the sine of 30 degrees, it is equal to the cosine of 60 degrees. Let's give another quick example. Now let's consider an angle of 40 degrees. Then if we take the cosine of 40 degrees, that's going to give us the same result as the sine of 90 minus 40 degrees. And if we simplify this, we can say that the cosine of 40 degrees, it is equal to the sine of 50 degrees. Hello. If you would like to continue learning about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.